Hugh Downs. The day after Thanksgiving seems an especially appropriate time to take another walk with Bill Porter, whom we first introduced you to last December. Doors have played a big part in Bill Porter's life. So many have been closed to him that he could have become a bitter man. But he has a secret key forged by his steel will and a spirit that can't be broken. Bob Brown is going to make your night with the simple story of a simply remarkable man. So many people over the years noticed this man walking through their neighborhoods in Portland, Oregon, and never knew who he was or what he did. We have horrible, long, dark winters, and you'd see him on these terrible, rainy days crossing these busy roads, and, and then I actually never knew he, who he was. I thought, what is that man doing? He was carrying a briefcase, wearing a tie, with his shirt cuffs neat and his shoes shined, and his gaze fixed on the houses ahead of him. What he was doing was selling household products door to door for the Watkins Company. His name is Bill Porter, and because the sight of a door to door salesman is growing rare in this age when people are reluctant to open their doors to strangers, a reporter for the Portland Oregonian named Tom Holman thought there might be a story in it. So I called him, and he was adamant, no story. And I remember finally on a, the day, on a Saturday, calling him at home saying, just let me come over and introduce myself to you and, and tell you what I want to do. Bill Porter did agree to an introduction here in his house in a middle-class Portland neighborhood. And when Tom Hallman arrived, his planned portrait of a door-to-door -door salesman soon began to develop into a story unlike anything he had imagined. Mr. Porter has cerebral palsy. His mother, Irene, told him that a doctor's instrument had damaged a section of his brain at birth. And the condition affects his walk, his hands, his speech, all the natural tools of the work he chose. He was born in 1932 when cerebral palsy was barely understood. As a child, he was teased, sometimes unmercifully. His father died when he was still young. And when others sought to discourage him as he grew old enough to work, his one unwavering source of encouragement was Irene Porter. Tell me a bit about your mom. What would she say to you? She inspired me to go ahead. Her inspiration kept him going when voice after voice told him there was no work he could handle. You'd go to the employment agency day after day. Yeah, day after day. But nobody would hire me. When Bill was growing up, people looked at kids like that as retarded, that there was no future for them. And the state told Bill he was unemployable and he should collect uh, disability payments. And his mother believed in this kid. My mother told me I could do what I said I have to do. And if his ambition was to sell products door to door, so be it. One of the places where he applied for work was the Watkins Company, which sells household products ranging from detergents to spices. Bill had already been rejected by the Fuller Brush Company, and Watkins didn't want to hire him at first either. But he finally convinced them to give him the worst territory they had in Portland, the one that nobody else wanted. They had nothing to lose by it, and it began a string of connections that involved hundreds of lives and changed a few of them. Before he ever attempts his first sale in a day, Bill Porter has a system that begins when he leaves his house at 7.45 a.m. to wait for the bus to downtown Portland. He can't drive, and because he has limited use of one hand, he can't tie his shoes or button his collar and shirt cuffs. But he will manage in ways that arise both from his sheer determination never to miss a day of work and a network of acquaintances who contribute to his efforts over the miles he goes. Boy. People who might remain anonymous to others take a moment to be themselves with Bill. At 8.05, he gets off the bus in downtown Portland and walks to the Fifth Avenue Suites Hotel. Here, the young bellhops, it's Joseph Sunberg on this day, tell him the latest stories about their children and families. I got that baby at home, so I got to make sure. The bellhops are the ones who carefully button Bill's shirt cuffs for him and take care of his collar and clip on his tie. And it's such a role reversal. 
a young man buttoning a man who's old enough to be his father's shirt. There's something very tender about it, something so pure and innocent about both of them. His next stop is a block from the hotel, the Greeling Brothers Shoe Parlor. This is where the shine comes from. This is where his shoes finally are tied for him by Jeff McAlpine. Then his painstaking daily work begins. Then he takes another bus to his route and starts hooking it up and down hills, up and down steps, and walking is difficult for Bill. The physical act of what he does really speaks to the internal Bill. Don't give up. There's no obstacle that you can't overcome. He walks seven miles and more each day with a chronic back ailment to stand and listen to people say yes or no to his overtures door by door. But this man who faced so much discouragement early in his life never complains and has never been put off by the rejections in his 35 well, years of selling. Kind of it goes with the territory. You just realize it's you business just when people say realize it's a job. It doesn't bother me. Is that your mom? Yeah, it does. One person Bill Porter has let in on some of his secrets of selling is Shelley yeah. Brady, who started working for Bill when she was in high school because he needs someone who can drive to deliver the products that his customers order. He says, I will... Um, knock on a door and they'll tell me no and they'll tell me to never ever ever come back i don't think there's anything we need this time he doesn't hear that he doesn't hear the word no he never gives up and they are some of his best customers this stop is at janet brown's house bill doesn't carry a display case but he does carry pictures of his products that he has mounted carefully in plastic pages is that where it comes in two no, he just can buy them in the bed to lay down. He doesn't leave without me buying something. <laughs> like Creole. I haven't tried too much Creole. He's got it figured out. He just keeps showing me things until I find just the right thing. I'm going camping, so I think oh, I better get well the business. Good. His customers fill out their own order forms for him before he's off again. Bye-bye. People don't buy from Bill because they feel sorry for him. If they did, I think they would buy once and that would be the end of it. But he's selling to second generation Portland okay. people. Why don't you give me two of those? This one here's the new one. I've been buying from Bill Porter for 27 years. 27 years. Two previous addresses and now this one. Won't take no for an answer. And he's always able to uh, sell products. If you had your case uh, here and were going to show me your product line, where would you start with me? With the laundry detergent. <laughs> and why would I need some? To buy highly concentrated. Highly concentrated. And I go about three times longer than the kind you buy in the store for the same amount. So it'll take the gray out of my clothes, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At the end of a series of orders, in his home, Bill types up what his customers have written down for him, using one hand, one finger. If needed, he will type intricate directions to each house, so Shelley Brady will know exactly where to deliver the products by car. How long does it take to type the order? 13 hours. 13 hours. 13 hours. He types with one finger what you and I could do in an hour. And uh, when I would offer to do that, he would tell me, oh, you're busy, and... And this is the way I do it. Why don't you just let Shelley type the orders? Oh, well, because Shelley had five children of her own, and she had her hands full of what them. So you're going to type the orders? Yeah, I was going to type them. <laughs> Through all the years of work, Bill continued to live with his mother until she fell ill in the late 1980s and underwent a personality change because of Alzheimer's disease. In its first stages, she went through a complete turnabout, and this woman who had inspired his career would beg Bill not to leave the home to work. It was one of the hardest times in his life. Well, I had to go to work. You had to go to work. I had to go to work to pay the bills. And then you would, you would be, you would come back home. And then she didn't speak to me when I came back home for about an hour, an hour and a half. Because she still remembers what I did to her. 
Bill tended his mother faithfully at the end of each day until she died under nursing care in 1989. He says he thinks of her still, just as if she were here in the home. We got some strawberry shortcake for you, Bill. Shelly Brady visits him often. Since first working for Bill in high school, she has grown up, gotten married, and become the mother of five children. She helps him keep things up, and her kids look on him as a kind of grandfather. What do you guys say? Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Kevin said sorry. And whatever happened to the story Tom Holman found when Bill Porter finally agreed to meet with him here? Well, in November of 1995, Holman's story was published in the Portland Oregonian. And then, this man that people had noticed but never known became a name and a face and an inspiration. I received hundreds and hundreds of letters, faxes, and phone calls, and not just letters saying nice story, but uh, poignant letters from people who are grown now who remember him when they were children who had teased him on the bus or who had hidden when he came to their door. One man called and he said he was one of the, the young boys when he was young who made fun of Bill Porter, and he was in tears. He said, would you buy $250 worth of Watkins products and give it to some needy families and let Bill get the commission? And tell Bill I'm sorry. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Bill's reaction to the letters that came in was to say his mother would have been proud. He faces each day just as he did before. The people may change, but the system he's devised works from this first mile on. As a man who sometimes gently relies on others, he is most of all a source of strength because what he believed he could do, he did. And all the voices in his life that told him no were silenced by the whisper of his will. He hardly ever takes vacations, sticks stubbornly to the order he has established. And rain or shine will walk his seven or more miles a day, often painfully, for around $300 a week, never complaining, noticed in passing from the windows of homes and cars, neatly dressed, moving on. He is one of the last of his kind, so take a good look at him. I think all of us want to think we have a little bit of Bill Porter in us. That's one of Bill's great features, is he's a man really unspoiled by the time. Bye, man. Take care. This was a man from a different era, working in a world that really didn't need a man like Bill Porter. But what the world needs is not what Bill Porter is selling, but Bill Porter himself. The world needs more Bill Porters, that's true. Some surprising things have happened since we first broadcast this story, and we'll tell you more about the incredible life of this Bob Brown. In a year, Bill Porter lost and regained his ability to walk, but never stopped selling. He was struck by a car as he crossed the street in front of his home and spent months recovering from his injuries. He feels comfortable walking only short distances now, so he turned to the telephone to conduct the business that for so many years and so many miles he had taken door to door. You do, my but in some ways, he now has a constituency that goes far beyond the clients whose homes he used to visit. Tonight, you're going to meet... In September, at the Kennedy Center in Washington, Senator and astronaut John Glenn introduced taped excerpts from our broadcast of Bill Porter's story at a ceremony sponsored by the National Council on Communicative Disorders. At the end of it, he introduced Bill Porter himself. Mr. Bill Porter. Bill got a sustained ovation as he accepted the council's award. Happy birthday to you. It was also his 66th birthday, and not a bad end to the party. To have an American hero leading the house in tribute at the Kennedy Center. There's Bill and Shelly. Shelly Brady and her husband and kids are still like a second family to Bill. And that other family Bill knew so well bellhops and shoeshine vendors who used to help him begin his day, he now sees on occasional visits downtown. What has remained constant in the year since we saw Bill Porter is that he still has no plans to retire. We'll be right back.